This week we'll move our focus on fills to pattern fills. And Illustrator has some great tools for making repeat patterns, whether you're using them for decorating your artwork like I have here, or for designing gift wrap, fabric, backgrounds, or other repeat pattern applications. I have a sample illustration here of a girl and her flowery umbrella that utilizes several pattern fills as you can see. And there are even some gradients, transparency, effects, and appearance panel techniques here that we worked with last week. And I'll take us through the layers here and talk about exactly what's going on in this illustration later. But first we'll start at the beginning and talk about Illustrator's pattern swatches. Pattern swatches live on the swatches panel and there's a collection of pattern swatches that come included with Illustrator inside the swatch libraries. They're right here under patterns. The easiest way to understand how patterns work in Illustrator is just to take a few examples from the library as I'm doing here and load them onto your swatches panel like this. They work like other swatches in that you can create an object on the artboard click a pattern swatch and apply it to your object's fill. You can even apply a pattern to the stroke of an object. And if you make the stroke thick enough like this, I'm going to add a stroke here and bump up the point size. With a thick enough stroke you can actually see the pattern. But typically I like to stick to using them in fills. Pattern brushes are more suited to strokes. Here's another pattern from the Illustrator library, and let's take a look at our preferences settings. The shortcut is Command or Control K. And here on the general pane, you can choose how you want the scaling of objects to affect the pattern fill within an object. And right here above Scale, Strokes, and Effects is Transform Pattern Tiles. If you leave this checked, like I have here, and hit OK, then patterns will scale automatically as you scale and transform the objects that contain them. A quick way to reset a pattern that's been stretched or squeezed from scaling is just to click the swatch again on the swatches panel to reapply it to the object. And I'll just undo that back to my original shape. You can also scale patterns independent of the object scaling by selecting an object, double click the scale tool to get its dialog box, and here at the bottom you have scaling options you can check and uncheck. So the options we chose in preferences are reflected here. Scale, strokes, and effects is off. The patterns option is checked. And to scale the pattern only and not the shape with it, I just uncheck objects. And now with only pattern checked, I can go up to uniform and scale this to 150%. And then I can use the preview checkbox to take a look at the result. And then when I hit OK, I've rescaled the pattern only while keeping the object the same size. We can do the same with the rotation of a pattern fill within an object. Just select the object, double click the rotation tool to get its dialog box, and make sure pattern is the only checkbox checked. Type in an angle and hit OK. Each subsequent object you draw will contain the pattern with the same scaling and rotation as the last. To reset, just click the swatch to reapply. Another important thing to notice about pattern fills is that in outline mode, we see only the path, not the pattern art itself. I'll go back over to the girl illustration here. There are pattern fills everywhere in this piece, but in outline mode, you don't see the pattern artwork. No flowers, no background dots, just the paths. So back to my test pattern here. As Outline Mode illustrates, there are no internal paths currently on this object that make up the pattern we see here. It's like we're looking at an abbreviation of the actual art here when we're looking at a pattern fill. So contained within each pattern swatch here on the Swatches panel is just a single unit of the repeat that gets tiled across the object you apply it to. Here's an example to highlight a tiling pattern fill that I took from the Illustrator library. On the left side, you're seeing the pattern fill unobstructed. On the right, I've added some grid lines and some shading to highlight a single unit. This box shows the art contained in the swatch, and the grid illustrates how the tiling works to make up this fill. This repeat is pretty complex. As you can see, the design crosses these grid lines, it took some thought and precision in the design process to make it work successfully. 
Let's look at a simpler example. This one is another one from the Swatch Library, a repeat pattern fill in which the art contained in a single unit doesn't cross the grid lines. These are the easiest to create, and we'll begin here when we create pattern fills and work our way to more complexity as we work on patterns this week. So back to my test pattern here. If you look closely at this example, you'll see a very faint line that reveals the tiling grid here. And it's at an angle now since we rotated the pattern before. If you happen to see these artifacts on your screen, you can be assured that they will not show up in your printout. They will not print. They can, however, show up when you export JPEGs or PNGs because they're lower quality. So for art that contains pattern fills, you should export high quality files from Illustrator, TIFFs and PSDs, Photoshop files. Those are the best. And then you can always export your JPEGs and PNGs out of Photoshop. But back to talking about patterns. Now we know about how they function as fills, repeating on a grid in Illustrator. Next, we'll take a look at the artwork itself, the paths within the swatches that make up the repeat. This is where we'll actually get into the pattern and edit it, change the colors, and eventually create our own pattern fills. So meet me in the next lesson, and we'll continue our discussion of patterns in Illustrator.